Hey, this is Lisa Miranda at Coffee Chronicles, where we know and explore everything coffee. From the best cafes in the world to where they actually grow the coffee. To amazing people. All over the globe. So stay tuned and enjoy the show. Today on Coffee Chronicles, we take you to the city of Miami. Miami is an international city at Florida's southeastern tip. Its Cuban influence is reflected in the cafes, cigars, and especially the coffee. People in Miami take their coffee seriously. Some even travel miles across town for what they consider the best cup in town. For our first cup of coffee, we head over to the iconic Cafe Versailles. Take it away, Lisa. Welcome to Versailles, the world's most famous Cuban restaurant. This restaurant is the unofficial town square for the Cuban community, and this hotspot has been serving some of the world's best coffee to the Miami community and tourists from all over the world for over four decades. Hey, so we're here at the world famous Versailles Cafe in Miami, Florida with Nicole Valls. Hi. Hey, can you I'm tell so us glad a bit? You're here. Oh, uh, thank you. Sure. Well, we actually in Miami pronounce it Versailles. We don't pronounce it the French way, we pronounce it the Spanish way. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, Versailles was founded in 1971 by my grandfather and now the third generation that's uh, helping to run the restaurant. We're famous for our Cuban food, obviously, but what's also very popular and we're very famous for is our Cuban coffee and our coffee window, which is La Ventanita. So can you tell me, what is Cuban coffee? So Cuban coffee is pretty much like an espresso blend, but while it's brewing, we stir in a bunch of sugar. So it's, it's hot, it's sweet, it's strong, um, it's really delicious. Cubans in general love things that are overly sweet. I think it was <laughs> because we grew up next to all the sugar canes or I don't know what, but our desserts are sweet and our coffee is sweet. Nice. So it's strong but, but good. Um, whenever there's something happening in the island of Cuba, all the news crews come here to get people's reaction. When Fidel died, there was a huge celebration out here as well. The roasting is an extremely important stage in the production of their coffee. They roast their blend at a specific temperature that allows the blend to maximize flavors, aromas, and crema. Their roasting method provides consistency to their coffee, batch after batch. Once the temperature is reached, the cooling process begins. Here you can see the cooked beans being irrigated in the cooling vessel. Look how the process converted a green bean that you saw earlier to now, this wonderfully finished product. Notice the big difference in size, weight, color, and aroma. Nicole, can you tell me a bit about the people who come here to eat? Who are they? What's the community like? You know, there's we have customers who come every single day. They'll go to La Ventanita at the coffee window and they'll just sit there for hours talking about Cuba and politics and their family. Um, they've kind of just become our own little group and they meet every day. We have a table that we call the teenagers. If they've been coming since we opened, and when we opened they were teenagers, and now they're, they're middle-aged men, um, but they have their own table reserved every day. They come every day for lunch. Uh, we have a lot of tourists that come to try and kind of check out Cuban cuisine in Miami, and this is where they come. But it's just, it is, it's a sense of community. Everybody knows each other, kind of like the town hall. Of, of Miami and the Cuban American community here in Miami. Well, Nicole, let's try some coffee. Yeah, let's try it. <laughs> so we have various things happening. Everything, all our coffees are based with espresso, which is what Cuban coffee is, and we just have different variations of how we drink it. So this is your classic Cuban coffee. It has that nice foam head on top, which 
kind of gives it that caramel color. Here we have cafe con leche. This is what we drink in the morning. We typically drink this in the morning. It's just hot steamed milk and then we pour the espresso in it depending on how light or how dark you like it. And then here's my personal favorite, uh, the cortadito. And it's pretty much about half Cuban coffee, half steamed milk. And you can either order it with like regular milk or you can order it with evaporated milk, which gives it an extra sweetness level to it. Thank you. And do you typically add anything or you have it as is? As is, because the Cuban coffee, since it's already brewed with a, with a lot of the sugar, it's, it's sweet enough already, so you don't have to add anything to it. Delicious, delicious. I will never look at Versailles the same again. <laughs> Versailles. I like it, you're pronouncing it correctly, like a true Miami. Mm. It's really good. Right. Now, Cuban coffee and espresso is a lot stronger. It's like almost double as strong as regular coffee, so. So it's strong, but it's sweet, so it's. Right, right, right. It's not, it's not, it's as bitter as espresso. Here we have, so this is our uh, tostada cubana, and it's just Cuban bread that's been buttered and put on our like press to get it nice and flat. And this you usually eat with breakfast with your café con leche. Okay. This is very typical breakfast uh, food. And then here we have our famous croquettes. These are ham croquetas. We have ham, we have chicken, um, and these people... It's not a Cuban party without croquetas. All right. So we got to have some of those, and you can get those here at the restaurant. You can get them at the window. It's very typical to get a coffee and a, and a croqueta when Breakfast you go. Breakfast as well, or any Breakfast, time. lunch, snack, late night. You like can eat those anyone, anytime. I like the way you guys <laughs> do it here. And then here we have our Cuban pastries, our pastelitos. Um, I'm going to cut some of these up so we can try them. Yes. This one's ham and, I'm um, sorry. Uh, guava and cream cheese, and this one's guava. And guava is a Cuban fruit, very, very popular. We, the combo of cream cheese and guava is very typical Cuban, and, and it's very good because you got the sweet of the guava and a little bit of the salty of the cream cheese. I'm gonna have some of this cafe con leche. We bake everything in house. Um, our, our croquettes, our pastries, our, even our bread, we make everything in house at our bakery next door. This is so good. I wonder what you guys have for lunch. <laughs> I will have to ask you, what meals do you guys serve here? Well, right now we're having typical kind of breakfast, window stuff, but we have our menus over 100 dishes oh, wow. that we have. Um, you know, Cuban food has a lot of flavor. We use a lot of spices, but it's not spicy. It's typically kind of derived from Spanish cuisine um, with a lot of new world ingredients. Uh, of course, Versailles is very well known for our Cuban sandwich, which is like the official food of the city of Miami, the Cuban sandwich. Um, you know, we have a lot of stews, a lot of beef, a lot of seafood, because Cuba was an island, so you get a lot of, of fish and seafood. Uh, our most popular dishes are probably like the ropa vieja, uh, lechon, which is pork. Every Cuban party has, like we roast the entire pork, so we have that here as well. Awesome. And the best meal to have here, which one would you recommend? My favorite is the vaca frita. Literal translation is fried cow. Okay. Um, but it's just shredded beef that's been marinated and it's cooked with onions on the flat top and we serve it with white rice, black beans, our sweet plantain. Uh, so it's, we love that combination of the salty with like kind of sweet at the end. So that's one of my favorite dishes. Nice. And then do you end with coffee? Of course. All right, well, cheers to that. <laughs> cheers. <laughs> Nicole, can you tell me more about how your grandpa started this place? Yeah, so my grandfather, you know, had a bunch of businesses and, and was doing pretty well in Cuba. Um, the revolution happened, so he came to the yeah. United States in 1961, yeah. pretty much with nothing, just pretty much the clothes on his back and, and my dad and, and my grandmother. Um, and, you know, he started working here, selling used restaurant equipment, and he convinced his boss to start importing espresso machines. And he, at, at first he was very hesitant. He was like, I tried that in the past. Nobody drinks espresso in Miami. It's not gonna work. My, dad, my grandfather was like, there's a lot of Cubans coming. We drink a lot of coffee. I think this will be a good idea. So he convinced him and he kind of started that arm of the business for the, for the gentleman. And that's really how La Ventanita, which is what we call our Cuban coffee window, um, kind of came to be. He started setting up these little espresso machines all over Miami, and now 
anywhere you go in Miami, from a supermarket to the gas station to restaurants, you'll find these ventanitas everywhere. It's kind of become a staple of, of Miami. Hey everyone, we are here at the Cafe Ventarina. <laughs> this is where it all goes down. This is the famous Ventanita. Um, these are the ones that you kind of see all over the city of Miami and, and this one in particular is you know, very popular. This is where all the presidents come, drink their shot of Cuban coffee, take their picture. Um, and then this is just kind of part of the Miami culture at this point. People come here you know, in the mornings, in the afternoons to get a little pick me up of their coffee, chat with people that they've, from coming for so many years, have become friends with and they just kind of like, almost like part of their, of their daily routine. And you said this is kind of like what your granddad began. Right, these are like the famous little coffee windows that you kind of started off when you started bringing in the espresso machines and now you'll find these all over but, but this is like the, the original one. Welcome back to Coffee Chronicles. Continuing our journey of great coffee in Miami, we head across the lovely Biscayne Bay from Miami proper to the ultra chic and world famous South Beach. South Beach is known for its beaches and the glamorous scene around its happening night spots and celebrity chef eateries. It is also known for its well-preserved Art Deco architecture. Most of the outdoor cafes offer a ringside view of the entire scene. Here's more on Craft Cafe from our host, Lisa Miranda. The Avalon Hotel on South Beach is amazing, but right inside there's Craft Cafe, and you get to enjoy beachfront, people watching, and an amazing treat inside. Hello. Hi. Welcome to the Craft Cafe. How are you? Fine, thank you. How are you? Do you want to try I'm some excited. extravaganza coffee? Let's do it. Okay. All right. <laughs> Inside of the iconic Avalon Hotel on world-famous South Beach, this gorgeous beachfront setting is Ocean Drive's most perfect corner for people watching. But inside, you'll find the most amazing coffee on South Beach. You'll find a hidden gem when it comes to great coffee. Craft Cafe. So I am here at Craft Cafe. Now this is South Beach's biggest secret, most well-kept secret when it comes to coffee. And I am here with Pascal and Victoria. Hey, how are you? How are you? Good, good, and yes, good I'm to see great. you. Good, great to see you guys too. Thank you. Tell me about your cafe. When did this come about? Did this come up, I would say around a year and a half ago. We've been thinking about the idea for a long time. And the restaurant has been open for 19 years within a building, which is a very good seafood restaurant, Fish Collavalon. And we start thinking, what can we do in the morning to make something different, to make something unique also in uh, South Beach, in Ocean Drive. So we come up by doing a good quality coffee because all the coffee we have, everything is organic, it's locally roasted, and all the beans have been uh, are coming from Peru. Oh, okay. And our roaster is right there in Florida. So that means it's roasted Monday and it's a new cup on Tuesday. So we try to come up with a very good coffee and then after we start having creativity we start thinking and we start not thinking outside of the box because why should we go in a box in the first place That's right? right there you go <laughs> so we start doing different things and we start having this hot latte this cold brew coffee with uh, waffle with caramel and we kind of mix it up we mix up the good quality coffee within also a candy with some candies, with some cake, with some pastries, wow. and, yeah. and that that what makes us unique. That's what makes us unique. That a lot of people are doing this with milkshakes, mm -hmm. but we stay true to ourselves and we stay true with the coffee, and we start doing this with this great quality coffee, and after that we start just creating more and more and more. And you know, once you start, you can can't stop. stop. You can't stop. That's. It's just how it works. The more happy you are, and it's not just about how happy we are, but when you see people, when you see the look on their face, when this coffee arrives at the table, that just makes you feel, you know what, we did something good today. Because it's not just a cup of joe, it's not just a cup of coffee. It's we take it to another level. We take you on a trip. We take you on a journey when you have this coffee. Pascal, let's try some coffee. Okay. This is amazing. The Apollo stick. I mean, I don't even know where to start. <laughs> it's 
So you can start either by drinking it, or if you're hungry, you can eat the waffle, the caramel, popcorn, the pretzels. We put, we really go all out here, so we really? put everything. So you, there's no way you're gonna leave this place being hungry. Ah, the waffle. Everything looks so good. And we put whipped cream on top, and we put a uh, caramel popcorn with chocolate pretzels, and we drip uh, caramel on top, and it's just amazing. It's delicious. So now you're the judge. Wow. Wow. This just changed everything. This is really, really, really amazing. Is this your favorite? Yes, the camera. Good choice, good choice. That's what you were missing. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> now, now I have to go get on one of those city bikes across the street. Yep. <laughs> I think that the reason they build the new muscle gym just a block away. Oh, perfect. For you. <laughs> they should sell the memberships here. <laughs> True, I agree. <laughs> now, on the other hand, we have the hot latte ones. You mix espresso shot with Nutella. Very mixed. We also add Swiss chocolate uh, syrup on top, so it's very sweet, and you get the chocolate taste. You put it with steamed milk, and the glass already itself has chocolate and graham crackers. Wow. So on top of that, you have a graham cracker itself with a marshmallow, a little bit of chocolate, and you burn it with a how do you torch. Think? with a torch. You burn it with a torch, and it just tastes like a s'more latte. It's very nice. How do you guys invent these? It all started with uh, with the tiramisu. Okay. The tiramisu coffee. It just because back in my country. When you ask for a cafe gourmand, they give you an espresso and a plate, you have a piece of cake, and you have a bit of everything within the same plate. And I start thinking, how can I put all that inside the coffee without putting a slice of pie inside the coffee itself? So it was just flavoring the, um, the tiramisu coffee with amaretto, with chocolate, with all the components you already find within a tiramisu. And then having the leggy finger with some mascarpone cream on it, and then it started like this. So, what's your favorite kind? I like the frappe ones, which is the cold ones. We have one that's kick shell, so it's a chocolate cone with M and M's on the around, and you have whipped cream and cup Reese's, like the Reese's chocolate with peanut butter. Oh, and wow. it's, then we put a lot of chocolate on it, make it rain, and then it's just M and M's everywhere. It's it's a, I'm a chocolate person, so. What about yeah. we make you a few for you to try? I would love that. What do you that. think? I would love that. <laughs> that sounds like a good idea. <laughs> I'm excited. Um, what should I start out with? Oh, I don't, I, know, I don't know where you're going to start, but you're going to finish in a long time because we have a lot for you to try. <laughs> Let, you like more chocolate, caramel? What is your Let's cup of tea? caramel. Caramel. What about the Apollo stick? I'll make yeah, it. Yeah, that's my favorite, the Apollo stick. I love caramel. All right. That should be a good start. Let's have some. We, we call them extravaganza because the way they look. When you have something coming, they really, really look extravagant. The kick show is going to be a chocolate, Swiss chocolate cafe frappe with a chocolate whipped cream, a Reese peanut butter cup, a waffle cone stuffed and filled with M&M's. The gold Oreo, which is the Café frappé mixed with Oreo cookie within a blend. So you have the Oreo cookie inside and as well on the top of it with a cherry, whipped cream and a vanilla syrup. That gives a lot of flavor. Just by the way, that was a creation from Victoria right here. And after we come for the hot one, the Nutella, which is a hot latte mixed with Nutella and we torch some marshmallow. Marshmallow, a torch inside the pot of Nutella as well as on the top of the coffee. So tell me Pascal, what do we have here? That's a cold brew. Actually, it's a fresh coconut with coconut water inside. We drill a couple of holes and then we put some of our cold brew coffee in it. And when you drink, you let gravity do the rest. So when you start it, it's very light. And then the more you drink, the more the bottle of coffee is going to empty inside the coconut and then you're gonna have a stronger flavor of coffee at the end. Why don't you give it a try? That's really good. Really good stuff. I love the mix of coconut water. 
it makes and that keep you hydrated. It's Miami, you have to stay hydrated. <laughs> thank you. So Pascal, thank you so much for some of the best coffee ever. Now your menu extends further than coffee. Yes, we do. You can find on the menu everything from the one you're having, a vegan burger, as well as the skirt steak, we have some salads. And the one I like a lot, the, the classic car we do for the children. But we do have an extensive menu beside only coffee. You can come, have a quick bite, and after just go and hit the beach. Awesome. And I have to tell you, this burger blew me away. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably the best burger I've ever had. That's not the first time I heard that. This vegan, vegetarian burger is something amazing you have to have when you come across Miami, definitely. Yes, I will be back. I uh, will be here waiting <laughs> for you. Thank you. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy the show. As always, your host, Lisa Miranda, and I'll see you at the next city. Yeah, it uses a lot of red light, especially as... And she's also a terrific oh, excuse host. Excuse me. And we are here in Via Primavera on ah, okay. and we are in Via Primavera in Pueblo. Sorry, that B. Thank you for watching. To the best people, to some of all of coffee farms. Welcome to I need a second. Oh, you guys all looked away. I thought, oh, you wanted me to stop. I thought it was the sound. Welcome to Welcome to Cafe. Adios. Thank you for watching me today. <laughs> Welcome to Coffee House Cafe. <laughs>